thank you so much for being here. All right, so this is what's going on. I took some time out to kind of digest everything over the last evening and get my head on straight. So this is the situation. I have, this is called the Bard's Oracle. That is the name of the campaign that we're running on. I have, I do things with the massive umbrella and then underneath the umbrella I have like secondary stories. So this is the Bard's Oracle. That is the campaign that you are in and it is what it's going to be called indefinitely. Um, it, it's the Bard's Oracle. Now there's going to be chapters. So this one campaign is basically going to be, oh yes, I can see it now, 12. I see 12. So I do a lot of improv and I read energy. So as I interpret energy, that's what unfolds before us. So woohoo. So here's what's going on. From our beautiful hosts, we have all info on the show is what they need from us. This is a list of what they need from us. So please check in, tune in, and comment below. Let me know that you've seen this. I am tracking who is commenting, who is here, who is participating. And if participation is not up, if you are not in a position where you can commit to this, that is something that I need to take into account because when we go do the broadcasts, I need everybody on the same page. I need everybody involved. And if you're not going to be involved, if you're going to have to be a lesser player, that's fine. I can work around it. Let me know. Um, so I'm going to basically have primary characters and then I'm going to have tertiary and secondary characters and then NPCs. So you're not going to get booted unless you're, unless there's like an energy conflict. Uh, but for the most part, if you just need to be a secondary or tertiary character, let me know because then I will just make note of that and I will ensure that any major plot assignments are not given to you because those need to go to primary characters. So that's a really great way of putting it. Um, this is where I use a lot of my writing, writing verbiage to, to really help assign, basically make assignments. So all info on the show is the first thing they need from us. If you take a look at the link that I licked, linked to this, not licked, uh, there is the Bard's Oracle. This link links over to Under Earth, my, my author website. And I go into detail a little bit about like a, su a summary and all the players involved. And I'm wanting to meet, I need to meet with everybody so that I can get an idea on your energy so I can figure out what exactly your social needs are and what kind of DMing style you require. Uh, so at some point over the next few days, I need to meet, I need to web meet with each and every one of you. Webcams are not optional. We have to be visible. So if you do not have a webcam, use your phone. The broadcaster explained that there are plenty of people who use their phones to, to chime in with this and it's perfectly fine. It's very compatible. Um, link, if you own a business, if you have a side business, he said, and this, this is it really, the audience who, who tunes into the shows that he runs, basically they end up picking favorites. They end up attaching themselves to basic characters and they become fans. They're going to want to reach out to you. He said, expect a fan base, expect to get fan mail, expect to get a following. If your character becomes a primary character that people just go nuts over, expect to have people reaching out to you. If you don't want this, let me know. If you do want this, if you are going to be providing any kind of a mailing list or a Facebook page, anything where fans can connect with you, let me know. That way we can get the link sent over. I will be adding it to the boards, Bards Oracle at Under Earth, and people will be able to find you there. That way they can connect with you. If you don't want to be found, let me know. Being silent is not going to be very helpful for me because then I'm going to go, did you see the notice? Did you, what, what are we doing here? So please communicate what it is you do want so I know that you've seen this. So I do know what your preferences are. If you are wanting to remain private, let me know. Confirm you've seen this and say, I prefer to be private. Okay. If you want to have the fans stream into you, let me know and we'll get you a link. It can be a MailChimp, it can be anything, but if you have a mailing list, if you're looking to build a platform, if you're wanting to redirect, whatever it is you're wanting to do, let me know so I can get that link clicked over there on my website. And then the name of the show, the name of the show is The Bard's Oracle. That is what we're calling this. Uh, legally, 
Dungeons and Dragons is not allowed to be used once we are large enough, once we have a massive fan, fan base, once we reach a certain caliber, uh, Hasbro will sue us. So we cannot use names like Dragonborn. We cannot use names like Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I think Owlbear or Bugbear are not allowed to be used. So I am going completely off map. Brandy, we, you, you and I need to meet again. I am going to be referring to this as either Dee Dee or as either those who must, who must not be named for legal purposes. And, and that's probably what I'm going to be referring to them from now on. Them being Dungeons and Dragons Beyond, them being any D&D &D reference. Now here's the kicker. If you are playing in character in game, it shouldn't be a problem anyway because you're not going to be in character in game making references to the business, the company. So if you have the skills to play in character, do so, please. I'm going to, it's not a requirement, but the more you can play in character, the better. LARPing, role playing, costumes, highly encouraged. If you don't feel comfortable, and this is my rule, this is my rule no matter if you know me personally, if you are in my life on any level, authenticity is rule number one in my realm. R authenticity. Be true to yourself. Now, within that guideline, if you have LARPing, role playing, cosplay, theater, stage, voices, use them. We, you are strongly encouraged, but only if it's compatible with your authenticity. So do what makes you comfortable, and if you have these skills and they make you comfortable, you are highly encouraged to tap into them and bring them on. The more visual, the more theatrical, the more in character you can make this, the better. The, I will be submitting a pricing tier and my logos. If you have any and all artwork, I need it. That way I can get it sent over. Um, that's pretty much it. There's going to be the option for the audience to chime in. They're going to have that option to jump in if they want and become an NPC. So I'm going to be doing a lot of interacting with the audience. Oh, I just got an idea. So um, this group is locked in. You guys have solid VIP access to the Bard's Oracle. You're in. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, it's just going to be that simple. So if you need to close this chapter of your life and move on, that's fine. You will always have VIP status. If you are in a position where this just isn't working out for you, that's fine. If you are a primary character and you need to drop to a secondary or tertiary character, that's fine. So brief, what's a primary, secondary, tertiary, in case you are not familiar with writing lingo. A primary character is someone who is in both groups, you lead the group, you are there, you are almost as like in a status with the DM where you are carrying a good portion of the story. And you will be getting major quests, you are gonna be getting like a lot. If you are a secondary character that allows you more freedom and movement with attendance, and if you are a tertiary character, that usually means that you are, yeah, mm, your responsibilities are going to be lower. You're definitely going to be bringing your own thing when you're there. Everyone's bringing their own thing, but it's really going to be contingent upon. Yeah, and that, that's really it. If you're a tertiary character, you're not going to get any personal quests because, because you're a tertiary character. So you can assign yourself to whatever area you want. If you're tertiary and then you want to jump up to primary, you can do that. If you are in a job where it's very strict and you can't make it and you can only appear like once or twice, so you can pop in every now and then as an NPC and that's fine, absolutely fine. So the roles are gonna be primary, secondary, tertiary, and then NPC status. And then you get a better job where you have full access to your schedule where you can jump in and say, hey, this is my new job and now I can be a primary character. Not a problem. Um, so no one else is going to be allowed in this group. I'm officially closing it off from any and all invites. People who are here are here. I think we have a couple stragglers. I think there's two people who never made it in. They volunteered. They said, I want in, and then they didn't show up. 
Um, so, and that's something else that I'm looking at as far as who has submitted the form, who is participating, who is active. It just tells me if you're a primary, secondary, tertiary character. So, as far as rules go and what's going to get you booted, it's really going to be about, and I don't think it's going to be an issue, but that's where bullying, that's where any kind of basically intolerance for another perspective, any kind of perspective abuse is going to get you booted. Perspective abuse is my own verbiage. I speak with my own language because I am from my own world. Oh, God, it feels so good to finally say that out loud. So I exist from my own world, and I, I come to you from a different place, and I have my own language. As a result, I use words that you're not going to be able to Google. You can, but my, my own material is going to pop up. So basically, perspective abuse is you have your perspective and people have their perspective, and you don't, you're not allowed to project your perspective onto other people. And people are not allowed to project their perspective onto you. There is a respect for all perspectives in my world. And if you are not respectful and honorable of this one and only rule, it will get you booted. I don't think it's going to be a problem because when I put people out there and brought people in and gave them the invitation, I fielded for that kind of behavior. And the people I have here are, looks like they're all six perspective. Again, that's my talk. Six perspective is basically people who have learned the five core ethics and you follow them and you live your life by them. And you understand that your gender is your gender or your opinions are your opinions and your perspective is your perspective. And every people, every people, every person has their perspective and their opinions and their feelings and everyone mutually respects everyone else's. So so that's that's pretty much it um, so anyone who does not conform to that respect basically isn't in this group so I, I it's not going to be an issue like we have a good solid awesome group of people so um, and attendance is not going to be a problem so I'm gonna go ahead and disclose a little bit of what's going on I'm going to introduce you to FAND FAND oh my god I love FAND FAND is an oracle she is my key to the door. Fand is my, she, she's the person who allows me to step into the game as the DM. So I will be DMing within the game instead of being the omniscient god power over everybody. I hate doing that. I've DM'd like that and it's just not logical. So I prefer DMing from within the game. So Fand allows me to do that. She is a fictional character I invented back in, oh my god, when did you put? When did she come into existence? 2015, 2000, no, before that, 2007, 2007, 2008 is when I invented her. And she allows me to step right into your world, into the playing realm on stage and literally DM right within as a character. So uh, she has, you'll, you're, you're going to meet her and things are going to unfold, but uh, she is, You'll, you'll find out, so we'll, we'll explain this. Um, I really like to withhold information because I love the surprise factor. I love to catch the, oh my God, you know, right there on camera. And the more you guys know beforehand, the less authentic it is. So I like to do as much reveal in game on the stage. So I will be joining you in game. I found a way to DM in such a way that allows me to be a player while I'm in the game. And that about wraps everything up for now. I'm going to say again, if you need help with any mathematics, uh, we're going to be taking your armor class into account. And when you roll, we're going to be, it's going to be very, very basic and preliminary. Home brew is encouraged. Brandy, pay attention to this one. We are not using Dungeons and Dragons because those are the, the they are those who must not be named for legal purposes. So instead of me, I can't censor myself. That is my one my law, one personal law is I cannot censor myself. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to tell you about Fand. I knew there was a reason why I brought her up. She's a flirt. I mean, she is highly sexual, highly flirtatious. So if you are not comfortable with that, I'm just going to feel the energy from you and then I just won't direct it toward you. But um, if you are okay with that and you're comfortable with it, let me know. If it crosses boundaries, let me know. And... It would be best if you let me know beforehand that way, and it's just the way she is. It's just the way I am. Um, it means absolutely nothing. So uh, I wanted to put that out there. If there's any kind of confusion, because when I get into it, it confuses a lot of people because I'm going to toot my own whore. I'm, <laughs> yeah, 
I love, I love my Freudian slip. That was so funny. Um, I'm going to toot my own horn. <laughs> I'm really fucking good. So when people see me in that role, they really get confused and they're like, is she coming on to me? No, I'm not. I'm just theatrical. So if it makes you uncomfortable, let me know. And I think that covers everything. Um, right, homebrew. If you, I, I'm, I'm going to be off books, so I'm not going to be going through Baldur's Gate because I don't want to get into the sticky legals of what I can and can't say and because I'm not capable of censoring my say, myself. Um, because I'm not capable of censoring. Okay, so I just need to disclose this. My trauma left me with stuttering problems. So my subconscious mind and I work together. And every now and then I stutter. And that's my subconscious mind trying to protect me. So if I am talking and I suddenly get into a fit of stuttering, that's why. And then I will break off. I have to. I have to break off and have a conversation with my subconscious mind to calm my subconscious mind down. Because when I start to stutter, that is when my fear system needs to be soothed. So if you hear me suddenly stuttering and catch on my words, that is why. And I can feel it coming in, so I just need to slow down and take some time. Uh, that being said, if uh, Baldur's Gate, for legal purposes, I don't know where the legal line is, and I don't play by the patriarchy rules, so I don't understand most of their rules because they don't make sense to me. So what I do instead is I'm just going to be making up my own realm, which has already been made up. It's already in my head. So I'm going to be improv all of this. So Brandy, for you. I know we talked about the maps. Pull whatever you want from wherever you want. I will tell you if I need a dungeon. I used a dungeon generator map. And I might go back to my dungeon generator map. And that was not owned by anybody. It was not owned by those who must not be named for legal purposes. So I might just do my own dungeons. Oh, yes. I remember. Oh, yes. Memories are coming back to me. I had so much fun with my dungeon generator. So I might do that. So, you know what? I might do my own maps. I don't know. Yes. Yes, I will be. So, and then there's artwork. So, um, I also have everything on the Bard's Oracle. God, this is just coming together and I can see it. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, definitely. I can see it all unfolding and I'm just so happy. Um, I am so excited because I can see things and I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be epic. So as I create the dun dungeons and all the things as they unfold, I'm going to be uploading them into the Bard's Oracle. So fans can go into my website and then track the story and follow along and be like, this is so awesome. And they can like collect shit. So that's going to be an option for people. I think that covers everything. Yeah, I think that covers everything. Um, on a personal note, this is a project I am doing for myself, for my own mental health. And I am absolutely using this space to heal in a very unusual way. My healing space is exposure therapy. My exposure therapy is allowing this part of me to take center stage and just be authentic, which is what my whole thing is about. So you are encouraged to do the same. I'm probably going to do a separate video and give you a little bit of information because this is where I break off into my psych work and I cannot separate pleasure and business because my business is my pleasure. So I'm going to be presenting a little bit of information to everybody and giving it in that direction. And I am highly encouraging everybody to absolutely step into their authentic self and embrace who they are and like i said that is like core at what we're doing here you cannot play dungeons and dragons without tapping into your shadow self that is exactly what this game does is it nurtures the shadow self which is why i stepped in and said i want this um there's a massive business agenda that i am on that's personal and I will be releasing another video shortly to explain all of that. I'm probably just going to podcast it and then I will drop the podcast here because that also ties into my podcast. So I'll be doing that. All right, that's all. If you have any questions, comment below. 
And if you have not done so, I've only gotten 10 forms submitted, but I have, is it 10 forms? I know there's four people who I am still waiting on forms for. You know who you are. Please fill out that form. I need to know what your boundaries are. And um, the broadcast is going to be 21 plus. And if you are shadow self, highly devouturous, you are encouraged. We want to step out of the comfort zone. This is not going to be a child-friendly atmosphere, and the broadcasters embrace that. They have given us the safe space, so we are comfortable to step in and be whoever we need to be. Um, that being said, I have a list of triggers that I will not be, like, there's, and I already listed them in the form. Um, everything must be 100% consent. No exceptions. 100%. NPCs, everybody, 100% consent. If it cannot give consent, then the answer is no. So that's going to be a solid rule. Children, don't exist in my world. I'm going to make that very clear, very simple. If there is a child, it's going to be a very brief, this child has been kidnapped, abducted, and we are on a rescue mission, and the child is going to be spoiled with sweets and ice cream while the child safely waits for us to rescue the child. Um, I don't even hint at anything like that off I don't, I don't like it. I don't know. Not doing it. So children, for the most part, just will not be in the game. And the only time they will be in the game is for a rescue the abduction, you know, little thing. Um, so that really simplifies a lot. Um, and yeah, I, I just don't like children in the game. And then animal abuse, zero tolerance. Any kind of cruelty, zero tolerance. I might have a bad guy or a bad person come in and he's an asshole. No, I can't even, I can't even pretend. No, zero, zero animal abuse. Just, just no, no. Um, so that's, that's solid. There's just not going to be, for the most part, there's just not going to be children in the game. And everybody here is 21 plus or older. It is absolutely a free space for your shadow self and 100% consent for everything sexual anything debaucherous, 100% consent, and then zero animal abuse. Those are going to be my three solid rules as far as ethics go. I think that is about it. Um, I did have one game, and I want to like put this out there, where my I did a whole, they had a party night, they woke up the next day, and the party woke up with body piercings. And it was hilarious on the surface. And myself and three characters had a fantastic time with it. But one person apparently had severe triggers. And it came out later that he did not consent to the body piercings of his character, which were easily removed. So I need to know if that's something that bothers anybody, if that's a boundary. Um, I did not, I didn't quite know how to detail this in the form, so I wanted to address it. Let me know if that's something that you're fine with, comfortable with, and yeah, just, just let me know. Um, I think that's it, so thank you so much, and may the kindest of words always find you.